Thanks for joining me this week on the show in the midst of the holiday buzz. I am here to spark a little conversation just between the two of us of what would it look like if your life was a 10? Why I think you are worth it, you deserve it, what I hope you feel inspired to create in the year ahead, and what that journey can look like. I look forward to celebrating those steps along the way with you. Living in a stressful world doesn't mean you have to give up on happiness. Instead, you can shift your perspective of stress and discover how to live your life in flow. Welcome to Happified. I'm your host, Susie Vine. Join me for inspiration and interviews with folks who are shining their light in the world in the areas of positive mindset, health, and wellness. I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome back. I am so happy to have you with me this week on the show. As we're closing in on the holidays, the new year is right around the corner, literally around the very next week. And I'd like to take a look, not at resolutions, not at intentions per se, but this week I have a question for you. This week I invite you to join me in giving some consideration to whether or not your life is a 10. Are you living your life to a 10? What does that mean? What does that even look like? What does it take to realize that? Is it possible? And are you willing to take a closer look at yourself, at your situation, and get curious about how you can move yourself that way? Is there something that's holding you back? Or is it perhaps yourself and your belief in what is possible. So lots that I want to really take a look at as we dive into this topic, as we are setting the course for 2024, whether you do still prescribe to resolutions or you prefer intentions, maybe you have a word of the year. If any of those relate to you, I would love to hear back. If you're catching the video on YouTube, leave me a comment. If you are catching the podcast on Spotify, now you can weigh in there. So leave me a comment there on this episode and always you can join the episode over on the website happifiedlife.com is where you can find every single episode of Happified and I'd love to hear from you so please join the conversation and let me know what feels most current most relevant most important to you as we move into 2024. So taking a look at this question, this has been something that has been coming up for me lately, and that's what inspired me to bring it on the show. And sometimes I have to wonder, are we aiming towards something that is realistic, that is possible? Are we even aiming towards something that is the most relevant thing for ourselves? Or is it a goal, is it a target that's been set in front of us by society, by culture, by the people in our lives who think they know us sometimes better than perhaps we do ourselves? So what does it mean for your life to look like a 10? What does perfect actually look like for you? If you've ever worked with a coach or had a strategy call with someone, it's possible that this is a question that came up. What would be your perfect day? What would be your perfect outcome? What does perfect look like for you? And perhaps if you are like me, that question leaves you a little unclear, right? Maybe 10 isn't something that comes to life in high definition in front of your eyes. Maybe you're not one of those people that takes naturally to the five-year plan, the 10-year plan, the super clear ultimate goal, the big, hairy, audacious goal, if that's the way you like to move. And what does that mean, right? So myself, I have to admit that I've always been more open to opportunity, to possibility, to changes in course and direction. And if you've heard me talk on the show about the different kinds of work that I have done, then you know I have followed a lot of different paths. I've been okay with change. I've been okay with the outcome revealing itself to me along the journey. I'm okay with change. A lot of people feel like they're allergic to change. They'll do just about anything in their power and then some to avoid it. 
So maybe that's why I'm not a person who was born with the perfect 10 picture very clear in my mind. It's something that I've been working on developing and cultivating. And I'll share a little bit more about that as we go on. But this is a question that I earnestly and honestly have for you. Do you know what your perfect life would look like? What does 10 look like for you? I'd love to hear. Please feel free to weigh in, send me back that feedback and just plant your flag and say, this is what I dream of creating for myself. This is what's important to me. Because when we have an idea what we are aiming towards, not only does it help us plot our own course to get there, to knock out the goals along the way to reach that ultimate destination, but sometimes it gives space for the magic and the mystery to bring things into your path that could be greater than you even imagined. I tend to believe that there aren't coincidences, but that synchronicities can be some powerful magic that can appear in your life. The right person at the right time, the right teacher or lesson, when you really needed to get clear on something that's holding you back or something that you're ready to break through. So once you have an idea of what perfect looks like, your life in perfect balance, I know that's a triggering word, but I like to consider balance as a moving object. Sometimes the focus is on work, sometimes the focus is on family, and the ideal life gives you the flexibility to claim the balance that serves you best. So what would that balance look like? What would your perfect health look like? Would that be waking up better rested? Would that be waking up with more energy? Would that be easing into sleep with a peaceful mind? Would that be comfortable and easy digestion? That can be a huge obstacle for a lot of people, especially the way that stress can have us so triggered and reactionary all the time. What would be your perfect vision? of a partnership, of friendships, of the way that you approach and engage in your job. And here's another question. As you're letting these pictures come to mind, maybe you've got a notebook or a journal, you're starting to jot down some ideas. Maybe you're just going to make some time later to sit and give yourself the opportunity to get clear with this. The next question that I invite you to consider after you have reveled in the world of possibility I'd like to know, I want you to really ask yourself, do you believe that you are worth it? Do you believe that you deserve your life holding whatever balance looks like for you? Do you believe that you deserve the relationship that inspires you, that makes you laugh, that challenges you in the right ways, that supports you when you need it, that gives you the room to grow? Do you believe that you deserve your health to be better than it was yesterday, even several years ago? I hope you're not resigning yourself to dwindling health as we age. That's a big reason I'm here making this podcast for you, to inspire you to reclaim our authority in our own well-being, our power to rebuild, if necessary, to reclaim our health. And that's what I hope you take from these episodes. Do you believe that you deserve it? Do you believe that it is possible? Do you believe that you have the skills wherever you are in your life journey? I do enjoy embracing the idea that we are perfectly imperfect and that we are right where we are supposed to be on our journey. If we overall endeavor to learn and to grow, to build in skills, to accomplish things in life, then even if you're not where you think you should be, I believe that you are where you're meant to be on your journey. And we need to honor all of these steps. We need to honor our imperfections. We deserve to love ourselves right now and not when we finally conquer that nasty habit, kick that one, adopt this one, have the quote unquote perfect meditation practice, whatever it is that you're holding out there outside of yourself, reflecting back saying, I don't deserve something because of this. I hope that you start letting that go, that you stop holding these lessons and punishments 
over yourself as a method of learning or driving yourself to do more. We need to, I believe, break out of that masculine energy, hustle, culture, drive to succeed mindset and be tuning in to what resonates with us, what feels relevant, what feels supportive, what energizes us and what drains us so that we understand what is right for us, what is aligned, what is wrong for us, what is for someone else and not for us. So that's why these questions I think are worth your time and consideration. And I do hope you'll have a notebook or journal, something where you can put these ideas to paper, come back and take a fresh look at it after you've given it some time to germinate and see how this all begins to take shape. All right, because I believe you are worthy of attaining the picture of perfection in your life. I believe that you deserve it. And I hope that this inspires you to begin claiming it. Now, realistically, I don't support toxic positivity. I don't support burying our head in the sand and pretending everything is fine while the world is in flames around us. There's a lot of evidence that the world needs our help right now. And we can't solve the greater problems in the world if we're not taking care of ourselves, if we're not having that strength and fortitude that we need to show up to what's important in our lives. So we know that perfect is probably unattainable, right? While it makes a great destination goal, it makes a great intention, it gives us something to aim for, you and I can admit to ourselves that holding out and punishing ourselves until we reach that picture of perfection is never going to serve us. So what does it mean if we aim for 10 and then recognize that Falling short of that mark is still a success if it is beyond the place where we are right now. So perhaps for the conversation that we're having today, you can make space for that possibility. We can aim for 10, whatever that looks like, as you become more clear on that picture. And we can celebrate our progress even if we don't make it to that destination. Because in my experience, I have found that sometimes those diversions, those wrenches that come up along the way as we're trying to make progress that we've determined is important to us, sometimes it leads us to a better place than we could have imagined. So I like to hold a little space for possibility instead of holding to that fixed line of what perfect is supposed to be. So even if perfection might not be possible, I hope that you're starting to see, to believe, to feel into the possibility that better is worth the effort, worth moving yourselves to. We don't need to get to perfect, but better is something that you deserve. So what would be better in your life if your life was just a little bit closer to perfect? What would you like to shift First, I like to look at the big needle movers and there's a wheel of life balance that helps you to assess the different aspects of life, personal well-being, physical health, emotional well-being, social connections, work and career. All of these different aspects fit together, right? Because if balance is the teeter-totter, maybe this wheel of life lets us see that it's more like that tilt-a-whirl that has different weights and balances, right? We're moving around in more than just one plane of assessment. So if you could move yourself closer to that perfect image, if you can move yourself up the scale towards 10, what would you shift first? Would it be having more energy? Would it be having deeper connection with the people who light you up? Would it be feeling happier and more positive more often? Would it be enjoying better physical health? Would it be that professional success or financial security that you're working towards? Would you have more focus and productivity and find out how that could influence so many different aspects of your life? Once we believe that it's possible and once we start to get the clarity of where we're out of balance, where we're not where we would like to be, along our path of progress, we can begin to 
seek these opportunities, ask ourselves the questions, get curious about what would move us closer in that direction. If we can be aware of, if we can recognize our progress, how can you see what has changed when we're in the middle of it, right? This is the perfect time of year. Something that I'm looking forward to doing later on this week is actually going back through my calendar. I go month by month, even week by week and take a look at what was I doing? What was on my priorities list? What did I finish? What did I put off to the side? What needs a little bit more support or time or tools in order for me to accomplish the way that I want to? How can I measure the progress that I've made in this last year, that I've made in this last five years without taking that opportunity to review it? So having these assessment tools, even being able to measure, is my life at a 10? Where would I say it is now? Maybe a seven, maybe a four, maybe a three. These tools of assessment, we need to welcome that practice, that ability to get a little bit objective, to take a look and see where we are, where we want to be, what we have done, because we get in this habit of only seeing where we have fallen short. We only tend to measure the deadlines that we miss, the projects that we feel weren't as successful as we wanted them to be, the social gatherings where we had envisioned some energy, connection, the way that it was going to look, and in reality, it was different. And without that review and that assessment, without bringing in some objectivity, it's really hard to get beyond the emotional, the stressed response, that critical assessment, because that critical mind is a lot more biologically supportive to us than the positive mind. And that's why we keep working on building our positive mindset, on looking for things that bring us happiness, on counting the things that we can be grateful for, because then we can bring balance to that negative bias that we have in our brain and start to find more things to celebrate. So I love the practices that help us to become a little bit more analytical. If you have ever practiced EFT tapping, that is one where very consistently at the beginning or the outset of a tapping session, you, whether you're going to be doing some tapping on pain, on your health or allergies are a very effective one in my experience, or traumas, triggers, things that are holding you back, that are coming up, any of those areas of pain, of frustration, of stuckness, we measure at the beginning of a tapping session. Where is this on a scale of one to 10? We give it a number, we tap on it, we go through the points, we set up our affirmative and aware statement, right? Not just a blanket affirmation, but actually feeling authentic in what we're saying. And after the tapping process is finished, we check back. Now, where is that on that same scale of one to 10? Has it dropped lower, right? Or is it changing? What now feels like the relevant issue that's coming up? And I love these aware and adaptive practices where you learn to check in and you learn how to support yourself and move yourself forward. Another wonderful practice where I have gotten much better at these assessments is through the practices of cybernetic transposition developed by Stuart Lichtman. And in my own personal experience, I've had the good luck and benefit to study with Ariana Rollins, a cybernetic transposition coach and practitioner. She is wonderful at helping you take a look at what you want to create, having the tools to move through the blocks and the resistance that are holding you back and have conversation, really get clear with what your higher true self, what your inner resistances may be having to relate to you, right? So opening those communications, but always looking at, is this experience a 10, the goal that you're aiming for? Where is that on the scale? Can we turn it up to a 10? Can we rewrite that? Can we help to retrain the parts of ourselves that hold on to those difficult lessons because of that negativity bias and learn how to stop holding ourselves back, how to release the blockers so that we can believe 
that our ultimate outcome is possible and have the vision and the capacity to see the solutions that are available so that we can change and grow and move in that direction. As we are coming down towards the end of the year, I know Ariana always offers a beautiful session to welcome the new year, to get some clarity on the goals. And so when I have that information, I'll be sure to include that in the show notes. So if you're a quick adopter to this episode and you'd like to learn more about cybernetic transposition, I will have Ariana's information in the show notes. Now, the next question that I have for you is when we're recognizing it, when we're measuring it, and we say, yesterday I was at a four, today in this area I'm feeling like a five, I've got the tools to start moving this forward, when the next check-in I might be at a seven. How are we celebrating? How are we marking our progress, locking it in? How are we integrating that we have grown, that we are moving ahead on our journey. I have a little refrain that is borrowed and I haven't watched the movie. There's a movie by this name, but happy thank you more please. Happy thank you more please is my refrain when I recognize something is going right, something is going better, that life is in flow, that I am moving in the direction that I want. I want more of these opportunities. I want more of these synchronicities. I want more of these light bulb moments. Happy thank you more please. What are other ways that you could bring in your progress, celebrate your movement in the right direction? Because where we put our energy tends to build, right? I have to remind my husband, who's a little bit of a ruminator, that if you're looking for the worst possible outcome, it's a lot easier to find it right? You're looking for all those signs. It starts to feel like the table is tilted in that direction. And if you're looking for those signs of growth, those signs that you are breaking through, you will see them, you will recognize them and celebrate them. It becomes easier to work through the fears that you might have, the worries and concerns, to break the old habits that might be feelings of safety and security, not speaking up, not stepping out of your comfort zone and stepping into that growing edge, right? Being willing to move out of your comfort zone because while sometimes there will be failures, while sometimes there will be setbacks and disappointments, other times there will be success. There is not only pain at the edge of that comfort zone, but when you look for and celebrate those rewards, then you start to feel more bold, braver about stepping into that gap. And so how would you celebrate this? I invite you, if you're still jotting down notes, anything that comes to mind, write down some of those things that that you do just to celebrate you, to nourish yourself. Is that a little bit of white space on your calendar to do nothing? Is it the opportunity to get outside and take a walk? Is it the opportunity to eat something wholesome and delicious, something that tastes good and is actually good for you? something you can get and bring in and enjoy. Give yourself opportunities, these experiences that you can savor and look forward to and attach to these better feelings of progress. And now I would like to invite you to look at ways you can bring elements of perfect into your life. If you, at the start of the conversation or if you've taken a few moments to write down, what would a 10 look like? Maybe the first thing that came to mind is the way that you wake up in the morning. Maybe what came to your mind is the way that you end your day. Maybe there's a transition from work to your personal life that would feel so centered and calm and help you hit reset so you can enjoy the people who are waiting for you when you get home. And think about what perfect looked like and then start to work backwards How can you bring that into your life today? What are the little building blocks of that? What are little aspects of that perfect picture that came to your mind that you can start building into your life today? 
and start just jotting down that list. What does that look like? What would you be listening to? Maybe that's taking a little time to curate a playlist of your favorite songs so that this is the song list that always picks me up or this is the song list that takes me from a higher energy agitation state leaving work to by the time I make it home 20 minutes, 45 minutes later, feeling more calm and centered. How can you curate little pieces of your life so that you start feeling the way that you would feel if your life was perfect. And how can you build that in? Is that in relation to movement? Thinking you have to exercise, meaning going to a gym and you might not like the locker room or you might not like the music or the lighting. Where could you retool your movement practice so that it is more nourishing, more supportive and more aligned with what you actually enjoy doing? Maybe, ladies, as we move through our cycle, we like different levels of energy, different weeks of the month. Maybe you've got your high intensity week. Maybe you've got your yoga week, right? Start tuning in to what you are desiring and look for patterns and consistency so that you can build in more of that, right? Ask yourself, what brings you closer to your perfect picture of peace? Is that more spiritual connection? Is that believing that there's a higher likelihood of positive outcomes, boosting your positive genius so that you can see the positive potential in situations? These again are things that can be learned if we recognize and start to shift out of that ruminating pattern into something that feels more uplifting. What helps you feel perfectly rested and restored? You know, what makes your home feel healthier? This can be a big project. I've talked on the podcast before and had a few guests on how we can have a healthier home. And it doesn't have to be an enormous undertaking. It can be as simple as, how can I adjust the lighting at the end of the evening so it feels more calming? What are little things that you can start doing so that you feel nourished and protected and safe and revitalized in your home? These are some things, but if there's one thing that's a little light bulb moment that gets you a little excited, that makes you curious, I invite you to start with that. Start looking for ways that you can move up the scale from wherever your life is right now towards the picture of perfect, whatever that 10 is on the scale. Because even moving yourself a half step, a full step up the scale is always wonderful progress worth celebrating. We don't wait until we reach that ultimate destination and then reward ourselves because here's a secret. That ultimate destination, that goal or target has a way of changing. As we age, as elements of our life change and evolve, people come into and out of our lives That picture of perfect isn't going to be the same for you. It isn't the same that it was when you were 20. It's not going to be the same for you when you are 65 or 70. And I'm sure the more you have lived, the more you see that to be true. We tend to be a lot harder on ourselves, I think, when we're younger. And by the time we have more decades under our belt, we've hopefully, if if we're aging well, we've learned to give ourselves some grace in these areas, right? So while I'm inspiring you, I hope to move towards that picture of perfection because you deserve it. You are worth it. It is possible for you. You are not without opportunities and potential and these magical synchronicities in your life. Also, there's that balance of making peace with where you are recognize where we can make change what is within our power and control and recognizing what is beyond it, what we can't influence today or this month or this year, putting our energy where it serves us, where it can move us forward and looking for ways to patch up those leaks, those frustrations, those things that are beyond us, right? So that we can believe we have that capacity to change. Awareness itself, starting to measure this. My life is a three. Oh God. It was a four last year and it's only gotten worse. Awareness can be stressful. And I hope that won't be an excuse, a reason for you to avoid taking a closer look because knowledge is power. Self-examination isn't meant to measure your failures. 
but it's meant to help you measure the gap to see where you are and where you want to be, to get curious about that distance, to start assessing what tools are already in your toolkit, and to hand some things over to the universe to bring together, to let those synchronicities come to you and let that magic help to ease your journey, right? Be, be one to invite solutions. And I hope that I've given you a little bit of inspiration, a little bit to take with you to start today. Start this week as the Christmas holiday approaches and next week as we turn the page to the new year and be able to say, to recognize, to, to write down what is your 10? What is your picture of perfect? And then choose one aspect of life, one of those ways in which you feel you can move the needle. Is that having more energy? Is that having better rest? Is that getting better nutrition? Is that having better social relationships? Is it feeling more fulfilled in my work or feeling like I'm bringing more of myself, demonstrating my strengths in my work or something completely different? Let me know in the comments, weigh in, where do you feel like a shift could have a ripple effect? and influence other aspects of your life and just help that momentum start moving you in the direction of progress. When we do one small thing consistently, it can have a lot greater benefit over the long term than a radical shift we feel is important, we hold over ourselves, we punish ourselves for not changing the habits and we fail to adopt. So look for the one thing that you can start to change, that you can celebrate that shift instead of looking for one radical change. You'll be way ahead of the game even if it feels like a smaller start because it's consistent. It's something that you can adopt and keep within your practice. So commit to one small change that you can do consistently. And if you struggle with any of these aspects, if you still aren't clear on, on what perfection in even any aspect of your life could look like. If you don't know how you can get from where you are to where you'd like to go or believe that it's possible. If you struggle with finding the positive potential because you love to ruminate on those worst case answers. I invite you to reach out through my website 3xlessstress.com slash strategy I welcome you to book a call with me that will take you to a calendar where you can see what's available in my schedule and we can have a conversation about what perfect could look like. I love working with clients to help them not only see what it is that they would love to be aiming for, but to recognize how they can be making these changes and to celebrate all of their progresses along the way so that they keep feeling inspired and courageous enough to keep stepping forward along their path. So whatever these holidays have in store for you, coming out of what has been challenging doesn't even begin to touch on the surface, right? 2023 has been heartbreaking in so many different aspects. And we can't bring change into the world until we are centered and restored and strong enough to stand against the tide. And so I hope that throughout our conversation today and in the other episodes, you feel inspired to look for the ways to put your control back where it has impact instead of feeling helpless in this world. And I hope that you will stand with me in believing that a better and more peaceful world where everyone has a place at the table is not only possible, but is essential to move forward to create. I wish for you peaceful holidays. I wish for you health and happiness and connection with the people that you love. And I can't wait to see what you create, what we all step into in 2024. Thank you for being a part of the show, of my community. Thank you for making time to listen. And until next time, take really good care of yourself. Thanks for joining us today. To learn more about living life with less stress and more flow, visit happifiedlife.com. 
Subscribe on your favorite player to catch the next episode as soon as it's out. Sharing really is caring, so please rate and review the show while you're there. And if you know someone else who would love it, please pass it along. Until next time, my friends, keep on shining.